Well, hello everyone. This is Carrie Beck with FamilyEbiz.com and we are here today to talk about sales pages. I'll give you a little heads up. I've had some technical difficulties, so I have to do this on my phone. Thank goodness I found my tripod, so it's not wiggly like it was last week. My laptop has actually been kibbutz, um since the first part of my trip in Hawaii, which I think God was saying quit, Carrie. Um, anyway, so we, uh, I'm in the middle of diagnos diagnosing it or whatever it's doing, and then um, my backup computer doesn't want to recognize the camera for Facebook, so go figure. I still got to figure out how I'm going to do a, a webinar tomorrow, but I am glad you're here. I will tell you one thing. On my phone, I don't know how to read the comments. I haven't had a chance because I had to do this last minute. And so if you put a comment, I will answer it. If you have any questions about what we're talking about, then leave a comment and we'll talk about that. So let's just dive right into sales page. What is a sales page? It is the page you are selling your products for. So some people have very short sales pages. Some people have long ones. If you've read some of mine, they're a little bit long. One reason I do use it depends on what it is. If it's a seven dollar ebook, it's pretty short. But if I'm charging something between twenty and a hundred dollars, then I'm going to make it longer. The reason, if you do a sales page correctly, it will hook them at the beginning and they will continue to read because they are truly interested in the topic that you are talking about. So let's talk about. I'm not going to go through everything about sales pages because that would take hours, but I am going to just highlight a few things. One thing I think that is super important when you are writing your sales page is that you make it conversational. We don't want it to be like the English teacher was grading this, and it's okay even to use incomplete sentences. I know. Can you believe I said that? Um, but you really do. You want the more conversational it is, like you are writing to a person. We used to say it's a sales letter. And actually, my beginning sales pages from like 10 or 12 years ago would say, Dear so and so. Um, and it might be Dear Homeschool Mom or whatever. And it was an actual, like a letter because I wanted to personalize it to them. I don't use that letter format as much right anymore, but that is one way that you could actually do this. So you want to be conversational. You want a headline at the top. At the top, you need a headline that points out their pain and uh, or their desire. That is a whole nother topic that I will talk about at another time in the next few weeks, our headlines, because there are actual um, little points, things that we need to do to make our headlines work. But our headline needs to capture their attention, hook them in to the first sentence. Your first sentence needs to lead to the next sentence. That leads to the next sentence. It's like a hook all the way down. So what do we write about? That's what I want to talk to you about. There are two types of things that you can include in a sales page. The first one, I believe, in, is something if you just want a transaction. In other words, you just want to make money. So I'm just going to have a transaction. That is when all you do is include your features. Features are things about your products. For instance, what's included in your product? What are the topics covered in your product? Let me give you an example. I just went to a, one of my sales pages, and I do include features, but I personally don't think that features sell your product, okay? So if all you have are features, then you are not probably selling. You could be selling your product. So I just made a list of these right here. Let me just read it. What will you find in Christmas celebrations? This is an ebook within my big bundle. And this thing goes on and on. I didn't even write all of them down here. November celebrations, page six. How to celebrate five special days in November, page six. How to use Thanksgiving to prepare for Advent, pages seven through 15. History lesson on thankfulness, page nine. Verses to memorize on thankfulness, page 10 and 11, and so on and so forth. It moves on to six fun Advent calendars. Those are all the things inside this ebook. This is what I call features. You need to let your people know that there are features, but people do not buy on logic, on features. They buy on emotions. You need to hook them in the heart. You need to hook them in the emotions, not in the features. So 
features are, if all you do is tell what it's all about, then you're just going to maybe make a transaction and maybe make some money. The other thing that you should focus on, I think, besides features, is transformation. Are you just putting things out for a transaction or are you showing the transformation that these things can do? All right. What do I mean by transformation? Are you telling your people the benefits? How are you solving their problem? How are you giving them their desire? How are you taking away the pain that they are feeling? And in order to do that, first you need to hit their pain point. Then you need to show how your item is going to solve their problem. How it's going to take away that pain point. So my question to you is, are you including these types of ideas in your sales page? How will this help your reader? How will this change your reader? How will it change their life? And if you're working, I mean, I know a lot of y'all are homeschoolers, but there's lots of other niches. How are you going to help? How does this help your kids? Excuse me. How does this help your health? How does it change their life or their lifestyle? What transformation will take place if they get this ebook and they put it into practice. Now, obviously, we can't just make them put it into practice, but we can offer them the tools to help them make that transformation. What you need to do is get inside your reader's head, whatever your ideal customer is, what is going on in their head, and that is what you need to present to them. What does your reader want to happen. One of my reader's biggest frustrations in the homeschool market is overwhelm, scheduling, organization, figuring out all the time. I can't keep it all together. One of the phrases I will use if it is true with that product is this. Save yourself some time and energy by using my plan. I've already done the work for you and chosen the activities for you. That is for one of my unit studies. They don't need to... Now, I do teach them how... If they want to do it on their own, I have a whole little product that. But if they don't, they just want someone to give it to them, I have that product also because I have unit studies that will save them time and save them energy and just follow my plan. All right. Another way that we can hit on benefits, hit on those heartstrings, are testimonials or wins. If you have people that have bought that product, how did it change their life? I am really working on transformation testimonials instead of just good wins. Wins are good. And if that's what you have from people, use them. But the best testimonial shows the transformation before they bought your product and after they bought their product, all right? If you don't have any testimonials, then we can still start with something. Ask your friends to write something just about who you are. I trust this person. I know that whatever they put out is trustworthy. So you can ask your friends to write something about character. Another thing about testimonials is it doesn't have to be written by that person. If they, uh, You can ask them, hey, you've, you've said these things to me. Could I pull that together in a testimonial? And then I'll give it to you and let you approve it and make sure it's what you really want to say. More people will do it if you do it that way. So let's talk about benefits. I'm going to go back to my Christmas bundle. These were my feet. I had, okay, first of all, features also include in my bundle, Star Bethlehem book, Christmas celebration book, Christmas around the book, Dad's perspective. It names all the things inside the bundle, but that doesn't hit the heart. Within each one of those, like this one, I have a list of probably 50 or 60 things of all the features of that item. But let's get to the heart issue. This is about the whole bundle. I mean, there can be still uh, benefits for each of those items, but I'm just going to share a little bit about the entire bundle and how I try to solve their problem. Because um, I say they're they're like frustrated. They all know they want to keep Christ in Christmas. They wouldn't even be looking at this page because that's what drove them to this page. And so they're wanting to know how to keep Christ in Christmas. And here's here's the exact thing I have on there. Here's how. 
If you feel like the holidays suck all the joy out of Christmas as you keep trying to slow down to remember the real reason of Advent and Christmas, I understand. One Christmas day, I cried from Steve's family to my family's celebration. I went overboard and was completely drained. Okay, let's just stop right there. There are several things included in that paragraph. First, I say, here's how. I actually use the words from some of my readers when they uh, answer my question, what's your biggest challenge? I had someone say, it sucks all the joy out of Christmas. And then another one say, trying to slow down to remember the real reason of the season. So I took phrases of actual words that my readers had said to me. And then I told a personal story because I wanted them to know that I understand what they're saying. You may not have that personal story. I don't know, but that is one thing you can do. How, what is the pain? I mean, I was crying. Uh, seriously, and this is a true story. I didn't just make it up. I still remember exactly where I was and on what highway in Houston. I was crying in the car, feeling sorry for myself. And if you listen to my Christmas workshop, you'll hear the story. So I say, I went overboard and was completely drained. The next paragraph. These are the reasons I created our Christmas celebrations bundle to help moms focus on Christ in Christmas, stay on schedule, and not go overboard. So I named three of their pain points, telling them I'm going to solve their problem. Now, go on, and I describe the different things, and I give them a conclusion at the end. But that is the beginning of my sales page. Am I talking about the features? No, I'm talking about the benefits. The benefits are to help moms focus on Christ in Christmas, to stay on schedule, whatever that schedule happens to be, and to not go overboard. Those, again, are words that my readers actually said to me, and that's why I use them. So you really need to understand the difference between features, what's included, and the benefits, the heartstrings. Remember that you've got a headline, it hooks them, and it drives them to the first sentence. And that first sentence hooks them and takes them to the second and third. And the paragraph that I just read was probably about the fourth sentence. It was very high up there. I wanted to capture their attention. And the first few sentences did talk about Christ and Christmas because I wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. So if they just read it, it is like this big. And then there's a big red bar with the testimonial. So they're going to get all of that information, what we say, above the fold, above scrolling down. You want to get the most important information at the very top of the page. So that is what I would really encourage you to consider. As you write sales pages, and I am just as guilty, it is so much easier. Oh, I wrote this ladybug unit. Oh, you'll get this many videos and you'll get this science experiment and I'll give you links to this and that and we'll cover the life cycle and blah, 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 whatever it is. That's easy. What takes time, but what will sell better is when you include benefits. That means you've got to get inside their head. You've got to know their pain points, what their desires are and show how you are going to cause. You're going to have transformation with the product that you are selling. All right, if you have questions, put them in the comments. I'm so sorry that I can't just answer them today just because, and I'm sorry, I, even if you could tell me how to find the comments on my phone, I wouldn't even know how to read your comments, so I don't mean to be, but that's just the way it is today. Leave comments, any questions, whatever, but I forgot to tell you something. We do have a free blueprint to online business, and you can go to familyebiz.com. And you can get the Family eBiz Blueprint to online business. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be an introduction and cover all the major areas that you need to be paying attention to when you get started with your online business. So that is completely free. Head on over there. I will include a link when I post this to the page here in the group. So thanks so much for spending time with me. I am Carrie Beck with Family eBiz. I'll be back later. Talk to you later. Bye.